Former Youth and Sports Minister Elvis Ifuye Ankara has called for an honest conversation on tackling corruption in the country, contributing to a discussion on rethinking political leadership in Accra yesterday. Mr. Ifuye said, observed that political party financing is rife with corruption as business interests which donate to political parties often demand contracts which may not be in the interest of the nation. People who have given you t-shirts and money and all kinds of things and now you are you are dealing with them. It, it was it was it was almost unconscionable, but it had to be done. And in the process, some of us almost lost our lives. Because then the pressures within and without. Because you are you are cutting off the source of funding. For both parties, they will come after you. So we have created a system that legitimizes and institutionalizes the corruption. And at the same time, we say we want to deal with the corruption. The solution is to deal with the system. When you deal with the system, then you no longer will have this awkward situation where you go and collect money from the person. When you come into power, then you, you have to investigate the person or pretend to investigate the person, whichever way. So one party will talk about it, talk about it. When they come, check all the corruption-related cases from boss to whatever. Check. It's linked to campaign financing. There's always a financier there. Why you think we are foolish people? We, 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 why is it that sometimes you ask yourself about which sensible person will sign this contract or will agree to this deal? Haven't you asked yourself that question? It's because our hands are tied. Former sports minister, obviously free anchor. So are their hands really tied, the politicians, uh, that is? Or we're joined on the line by Deputy Ambassador to China, who is also a politician. Hello, sir. Hello, this is what are your thoughts about this conversation that uh, Mr. Friyankra seems to have started? Thank you, uh, and uh, good afternoon to your terrorist listeners. Indeed, uh, listening to it, uh, one can only say that this is a very frank uh, discussion. It's been a very frank uh, presentation, and um, I agree with him on a number of counts uh, this particular issue that he stood for. Particularly the fact that um, when someone does help you, it becomes a bit difficult to turn your back on, on the person. I mean, in our society, say for instance, someone who gets rich, you get all sort of people coming to assist you, those that are helping you to arrange chairs, those that are giving you donations, those that are helping you to rest tents and so on and so forth. They do that not by telling you that when it's our turn, you have to come and do it for us, what we've done for you. But naturally, when they also do get into trouble or when they do need any, any form of assistance, you are bound to help. That's our very society we live in. So these things are not just cut for only politics. Indeed, it is true to a very large extent in our political discourse, but it is the very fabric of our society that when someone helps you, you more or less feel indebted to the person. And I believe that if this thing is allowed to go on, it becomes a danger to all of us, our very existence. Dr. So Jamna, this is a very curious point, especially since you're representing the country in, in, in China, uh, a country that's also, you know, t look, looking to... Uh, looking to strengthen its position in, in Africa and China has been doing a lot of things for, uh, for, 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 for African countries including Ghana. How do you think that plays out still within the politi politics, you know, the body politic of the country? You see, you see the, it's human nature that when someone helps you at any point in time, it gets to the point the person will also more or less demand something of you. Mm. But the owners will then lie on you to decide whether or not to give in to that particular demand of that person. That's why we I always say that even when you're negotiating with your brother, you don't say that because it's my brother, I will just uh, turn a blind eye to certain mm -hmm. things. You have to be sit, you have to be serious. You have to sit up. But either sure either way, you take principled positions. Either so way, either way, it comes with, with a cost. Isn't anything different, either the way, it comes with, with a cost, right? Not anything different. It's up to us as a country 
to ensure that whatever agreement we go into will inure to the benefit of Ghana. And mm. our president, His Excellency Nana the Dancer Squadron, has made that clear on several occasions that whatever agreement we go into with China, we will make sure that Ghana gets the better out of it. Okay. Okay. So finally, going forward, what do you... you you've, you've spoken about being, being firm in negotiations, um, etc. Do you see... A solution especially to how the the political system is built now uh, anybody at all can fund any organization can fund any political party do you see an end to this problem in that case so you see the the beauty of democracy is that it's, it's a living thing it's not something cast in stone mm. so as we go on in our democratic discourse we should be able to get to a point where we'll say that okay we've done this particular thing in this particular way, for this period of time, these are the loopholes, these are the gaps. Let's begin to fill them. And I'm very happy that it's coming from the opposition side. So it's time we all sat down and collectively decided that, look, let's look at financing of political parties so that it wouldn't get to a point where uh, political leadership in the country would be the reserve of the rich, those who have the money. When it gets to that point, we will be in a sorry state because we will not necessarily be getting leaders who will be leading the country uh, to greater, greater heights, but rather getting people who will be occupying positions just because they can afford it. Right. And that is why there is a need for every Ghanaian to contribute to all this discussion. We, look, we should look at it politically. We should look at it in the national interest because it is a danger signal we are seeing. If we don't sit up now and start addressing some of these things, very, very soon, politics will be the sole reserve of the, the rich people in our society. Hopefully. And that will not necessarily get us the, leaders, the kind of leaders that we, we want. want the mm. Hopefully we won't get there. But Dr. Uh, Jamna, thank you so much for your time uh, joining mm -hmm. us all the way from China. Dr. Charles Jamna there is a deputy head of missions uh, for Ghana in China.